Okay, what we're going to do here is a quick introduction to the RapidSV probe and the RapidSV log software that's used to run the RapidSV probe here from Valport. So the first thing we're going to need to know about is the Bluetooth dongle. It's got a clear plastic end that allows you to see the lights that uh, indicate the communication between the probe and the computer. So the first thing we're going to do is plug the dongle in. I've already installed the Valport software from the disk on the computer, so we're good to go there. The driver for the Bluetooth dongle here will install automatically in Windows, uh, and uh, you can also connect to the internet to download the driver. It should do that automatically if you have an internet connection. So the driver's been installed. So what we're going to do now is open up RapidSV log software. So what we need to do to start with is to set up the Bluetooth dongle on the right COM port. Do this once and then, then you're good to go after that. So I'll go to control panel and find system, device manager, should be fairly easy to find the COM port here. It's shown here as USB serial port, uh, that's what comes up for this um, Bluetooth adapter. So it says here it's located on COM31, so I'll need that information in RapidSV log. So first thing to do is select the COM port, and there you go, I've already been in there and selected it, COM31. You'll see there's a little dot next to the COM port if it's selected. If I wanted to change it to COM12, I'll click on it, and you'll see there the dot goes to COM12. So we'll put it back on COM31. First thing I'm going to do is set up the probe. So this probe will be paired with this Bluetooth adapter uh, when we finish this procedure. So I'll pull out the magnetic switch, turn the probe on. First thing we're going to do here on the menu is scan for Rapid SV. So that's going to look for all the Rapid SVs in the environment and uh, register the, the Rapid SV probe on this. Um, serial, Bluetooth serial adapter here. So I'll click that. You see the light here goes orange when it's scanning. You can see here it's found rapid SVT, so this probe's got sound velocity and temperature, and the serial number is 35912. And we can check that here on the probe. Serial number 35912. So it's already found it. So now if you look at select rapid SV, this SV Pro SVT three five nine one two appears. Now this is a little little bit tricky here. The next thing to do after you scan for the rapid SV is click on here to select to the rapid SV. There's no dot shown here. So this is not selected at this point. So we click on here. And we'll go back in so you can see the rapid SV is grayed out and there's a dot. So now we know this rapid SV is selected and it's paired with this Bluetooth dongle here. And the why we know that is this color of the light has changed from the orange color to a uh, blue color there. So that's showing that the, this is paired with this. Okay, so we've got nothing running on the computer. Uh, we, I pulled the dongle out, so now I'll put it back in. And you see that uh, the color quickly changes to blue, which means these two are connected again. So the, the key thing about this is it's independent of software running on the computer. So it will be connected, remain connected to the probe. And you can move this from computer com to computer and it will, it will keep um, establishing the thing with the probe that's been selected. So we'll go back on the Rapid SV log here. Okay, the next thing we want to do is set the control settings for the, the profiles that we're going to be running. Start depth is the depth below which profile is recorded. So at a depth deeper than 0 0.1 meters, data will be recorded. 
typically we'd probably be, have one or two meters in this field. Um, so we eliminate jump data at the start of the profile. But for this instance, we're going to use 10 centimeters. The stop step is the vertical distance the probe has to rise before the data logger is turned off. So what this does is it uh, eliminates junk data on the upcast. So all you record is the downcast. You can have typically 0 0.5 meters in here and it works well. It doesn't really need to be any higher than that. In this instance we're using 0 0.1 meters. Interrupt timer, that's the time the software waits between interrogations of the probe and you'll get familiar with how to set this. Right now we're going to set it at two minutes. So the software will communicate with the probe, configure the probe and it won't do anything to it until two minutes are up, which is essentially the time you've got to deploy the probe. Okay, what we're going to do now is a simulated cast with the RapidSV probe and we're going to use the RapidSV log to set up the probe and uh, get the data off the probe um, automatically. So, first thing I'll do is well, I'll plug the dongle in. What it's going to do is it's going to try and scan for Rapid SV probe, which is indicated by the purple light. Green light means uh, can't find anything, green doesn't mean go in this instance. So it's going to scan periodically to see if it can find Rapid SV probes in the area. And this is happening independently of any software running on the computer. The, the Bluetooth module here is taking care of that itself. So when I pull the magnetic plug out, and this starts the probe running, you'll see that the dongle here will make it establish a link with this probe, which is indicated with the blue light in this case. So, so these are connected. So now we can open the software up. We, we don't have to do it in that order. But uh, I've just indicated, it's just uh, demonstrating there that uh, the activity of the Bluetooth dongle is independent of the software running on the computer at the time. So, check control settings 0 0.1 meters, the probe's going to start logging when it reaches 0 0.1 meter depth. It's going to stop logging when it is uh, raised upwards 0 0.1 meters and the probe is going to be interrupted every two minutes. So what we can do is set the probe running by clicking on monitor mode. Firstly we just confirm here, select rapid SV, this is selected the same serial number is on the probe SVT35912 so nothing will change unless we select on the Rapid SV probe. This will stay linked to this probe here. So click on monitor mode. This will start the probe running. You can see here it's getting the information from the probe. Any data that may be already on the probe is downloaded and the probe is wiped. Take the pressure reading in air, so make sure when you're doing this the probe is not you know, partially submerged or being affected by, by any uh, splashing of water onto the pressure transducer. The memory's been erased, instrument running, green bar. So now we're ready to deploy the instrument. We've got two minutes to deploy it before that procedure occurs again. So what I'm going to do is drop the probe. Okay, so it's reached 0 0.1 meters in depth. So imagine it's falling through the ocean right now. You can see here that the dongle is trying to communicate with the probe, but it can't find it. There's no blue light anymore. See, it's trying to locate the probe unsuccessfully. The log data logger is now logging SV and temperature information, and it will continue to do that until the probe is pulled up by 0.1 meters. 
which we're not going to do straight away. See so here the two minute time. We've got 52 seconds left before the two minutes elapse. Now at that point, the rapid SV log is going to attempt to interrogate the probe to get the data off it. And what it's going to find is that it can't do that because the probe at this point is about 400 meters below the surface of the water. So I'll wait for that procedure to occur so you can see what it looks like. And then once it's done that, we can take the probe out of the water so we can take the data off. So you really shouldn't be deploying the probe anywhere close to the end of the period, the two minute period. So when the bar is yellow, you should really be waiting until it turns green again so you can get, make sure you get the probe out into the water before this interruption procedure starts occurring. So what's happening here is the rapid SV log is trying to establish a Bluetooth connection with the probe and it can't do that because the probe is right now about a thousand meters below the surface of the water. So it will continue to do this until the probe re-emerges. So this is not a problem at this point, the fact that the, the um, software here is trying to interrogate the probe. It will keep doing this until the probe comes back into range. So what we're going to do now is pull the probe out when the probe's gone upwards by 0 0.1 meters, the Bluetooth antenna is going to be switched on and then the data will be then available for download onto the computer here. Okay, so it's seen it straight away. Now it's taking that long profile that we just collected off the probe onto the computer here. That was a fairly substantial profile. That would have been a, a very deep one. But still, it um, didn't take very long. But all the data's off. The probe's being reset. And we'll very shortly see the green light again for the probe to be redeployed. So we can go through it again. We're going to do a much shorter cast this time. So the instrument's running again. You'll see here that the Bluetooth connection has been severed because the probe's below 0.1 meters in depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the probe out and simulate a much shorter cast. So the probe's coming back already Okay, so the probe's out of the water. Unlike last time, the data will not be automatically extracted because we haven't reached the two minute period. So in 60 seconds, the first communication with the probe will be established and then that data will be extracted. Okay, so trying to interrupt the instrument. Obviously the instrument's right here, so it's going to see it straight away. It's going to get that much shorter cast off the probe. It's going to take less time this time because there was less data points collected. Okay. And uh, the probe's being reset, ready to go again, and we can do the whole thing over again. Okay, so instrument's running ready to go and we can do another cast.